while well, lass is dry, I thought I would do a, a sort of a lassie video. This isn't so much um, a how to and what to video. That's something that we could maybe do, you know, another time. We'll kind of save that. But I thought, come here. But I thought I would just talk about Lassie. Um, yeah, I just thought I would just talk about Lassie for once, rather than rather than me, because obviously we understand that you're the star of the show, aren't you? Hey, eh? hey. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're, we're kind of. We'll do a little bit of history, thoughts, and kind of then <laughs> let her go in the water because that's obviously where she's wanting to go. Come here. Because that's obviously where she's wanting to go in a minute. Obviously, if you've been watching, come here, Lassie, come here, <laughs> wait a minute. Obviously, if you've. You <laughs> obviously, Lassie, come here, wait a minute, come here. <coughs> obviously, if you've been watching the channel, you know, for more than 10 years, or you've gone back in time, then obviously you will know that, uh, you know, I had a dog before Lassie called Bess, who was originally my, my first wife's... Lassie, come here. I kind of inherited Bess in a way, although I knew Bess from when she was about six months old or something, around about uh, you know that age but of course she didn't do her camping trips until she was about 10 or 11 probably near 11 years old and she took to the camping um, seeing very well she was a, a collie shepherd german shepherd collie cross i kind of learned and figured out that Collies seem to be, you know, a pretty good mix, you know, a pretty good dog to be outside. And I'd always wanted a collie. We had a collie cross when I was very young. I was probably about six years old or something like that. And we had a collie cross called Judy. And we, obviously I was too young. I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about training or dogs when I was six, seven, eight years old. So I do remember Judy quite well though. Um, she was definitely my mum's dog. And if she was in her mum's car, basically uh, no one could get near the car, you know, unless you, you know, especially if you valued your limbs or something like that, you know, she'd be inside her mum's car and then you'd approach the car and it was like this wild wolf in the car, just, <laughs> barking at you, snarling and everything. And she'd sit at the top of the stairs and if you wanted to go up the stairs, if my dad or I wanted to go upstairs and my mum was upstairs, you had to get your mum to come out of the bedroom or come from whatever she was doing to call Judy away from the top of the stairs because you wouldn't be able to get up the stairs. You'd have this dog snarling at the top of the stairs at you. But well, anyway, that's a long, long time ago. And we, we had other dogs as well. Lassie, come here, you're, we're talking about you, so you can just stay a minute. You can, come here, you can stay a minute. So we had a couple of other dogs in between that were very, very nice dogs. Probably one of my all-time favorites, along with Lassie, of course, was a dog called uh, Sasha. And I never took her hiking or, well, actually, she did go on the, my very first Dartmoor walk 20-odd um, years ago. So, yeah, she, she did go on that one. Um, but other than that, she was more a uh, chasing the ball in the park type of thing. We know what you want. You want to go flying in that water, don't you? You can wait a minute. You wanted cuddles last night, and I was trying to get to sleep, so you can have your cuddles now. <laughs> So, yeah, so we ha I had Sasha for about 12 or 13 years. Judy is the longest lived dog that we have had. Let's test this Helenox chair. So Helenox ground chair takes the weight of a, of a fat camper and a 20 kilogram um, slightly overweight um, 
and Lassie as well. We need to try and get out and do some more walking, Lassie. We're too lazy, but anyway, it is what it is at the moment. So Helenox is standing up to uh, out to that. Oh, Lassie. Oh, you like your tickle tummy, don't you? Yes, you like your tummy tickled. So, I probably won't talk. Come here, Lassie, come here, wait a minute. I, there's no point in talking too much about bass. If you want a specific bass video, I don't really have any footage. I've just got Lassie and obviously, you know, footage um, previously, but I could talk about bass if, if you're, come here, come here. If you're particularly, you know, interested, because it's kind of interesting from a training point of view. Um, but anyway, we won't discuss bass too much today. We'll go straight on to Lassie. So, Basically, when Bess finally passed, I wanted a collie, you know, specifically, I wanted a pure collie. And it just, I just got lucky that I looked online and there was a, a collie breeder um, very close to home. And most, <laughs> most of those collies are, well, they're all, they're all show collies. And most of them probably go on to be doing, you know, agility classes and shows and and the such like. But, you know, I wanted a collie that didn't do all that stuff, but that I could bring out here that was rough and tumble, you know, fit, agile, <laughs> relatively obedient. Um, and, and, you know, pretty much we kind of look after herself out here where I don't have to worry about her getting cold or wet too much. Um, we've had a few comments, you know, over the years, oh, your dog's wet or your dog's cold or something like that. Well, the Collie is the most intelligent dog on earth, although they've actually now said that another dog is more intelligent and the Collie is being relegated to the number two position now um, since some recent research. But the way that I see it is as long as it's not, you know, ridiculously, you know, aterically cold, um, I, I'm happy with her, you know, eating, you know, producing enough warmth, uh, from her food, from a double thick coat that, you know, she'll be okay pretty much on anything, anything that I do. So I really don't think people should worry, you know, too much about um, weather and, and Lassie. Uh, you know, they're an intelligent dog. She should be intelligent enough to know and understand that when it's... When, when it's wet, she's going to be cold. Um, and if you go and get wet and then it's cold afterwards, well, don't come, <laughs> don't come crying to me. No, you've got to use your brain and not get wet. Um, but in the winter, you know, I always have a towel, you know, where I could dry her off if I had to. But she lives outside most of the time. You know, most of my shelters are big enough for, you know, for her to come in if she wanted to. And she does come in sometimes, and it's not the first time where it's been, you know, particularly miserable outside. And she has, you know, she has come in. Come in. And she has come um, undercover. I've noticed that she doesn't like lying on, like a nylon bed or anything she won't lie on though she avoids those like the she just won't lie on it um I, I literally if the ground is really really cold and i'm really concerned you know about snow and that type of thing uh then i will try and get her on a foam mat to insulate her from the ground a little bit to give her some um, protection. So, you know, I'm not a complete heathen that just go out and freeze to death, you know, in the Arctic or anything like that. But she just seems to manage fine. Uh, when I had Bess, what I noticed with Bess was that I, I, I used, I, 
I, I, I, I, <laughs> with Bess, I did get an, like an overcoat. Lassie, come here. Come here. I did get like an overcoat to go over Bess. Um, and I often wondered, and I would put it on there when it was very cold, and we probably had colder winters with Bess than we've had really with Lassie, because down here it's generally quite mild, really. But I did put that warm coat on Bess, and I often wonder really whether it was compressing the coat and probably not doing that much positive to help because I'm just thinking well I know a coat isn't isn't down on a on a dog it's not like the down sleeping bag but I can't help but think if you put a coat on a dog it's going to compress their coat down therefore their coat is going to be less efficient and then you're relying on an artificial over jacket which I doubt is as efficient as a double layered um, collie coat. I don't know. I don't have any anything to back that up. It's just a thought that I have. So, anyway, she she's fine. Um, I do have I do have a sleeping bag that she could go in, which I got from Amazon. I don't have any links below. I remember trying to find a link and put it below. Poop deck. Remind me to put a link below if I forget. Um, and I, I've not, I, I've left it in the car uh, several times. I've just not felt the need that she needs it yet. I think if I was going out and the temperature was going to be like minus five or something like that forecast and snow, I probably would carry it in that instance just as a backup, just in case, really. Um, but generally she seems fine and she's done a lot of walking in snow. I remember one other subscriber, it might have been Ray, um, Voodoo Ray, who said that he had a collie and his collie used to get snowballs, you know, up in, in the paws. And, and when I had that with Lassie when she was, when she was a puppy or very small, her first winter over the top on the North Moor, she had snowballs on her feet and I had to try and get them off her feet. So, and her feet were fine. Um, so yeah, I think you just gotta be, you know, careful really, but I've, so far she's been fine. So my attitude is just get on, <laughs> get on with it, Lassie. And you haven't, you haven't frozen or, or drowned yet, have you? <laughs> eh? But she's, she's reasonably well behaved. One of the things that I was absolutely adamant about in the very early, the early days was no sheep chasing because, you know, obviously out here there are sheep, you know, not everywhere, but there's quite a few sheep and she's a sheep dog. And obviously dogs like this, their number one instinct is to chase things. So. So that was one thing that I had to train out of her with a long, long lead training. And that took, that was quite a bit of, that was quite a bit of training, um, you know, to stop her from chasing things. I must admit that did take, that did take a bit of work, you know, walking around Cheddar where there were sheep everywhere. And Cheddar was a really good sheepdog training place because like I said, there is literally just sheep in every field and it's a very good place just to, you know, not let her chase sheep. So that was a very good proving ground, wasn't it? Uh, but you're good, she's good company around camp. I mean, not that I ever see her sometimes, you know, I don't tie her up or anything like that. Obviously, if your dog's likely to wander off or something, then you, you know, you probably need to you know tie them up for the night or something but I, I never tie her up she's never far away and if I'm camped say three or four hundred meters in that direction away from this water she won't come over to the water because it's like out of earshot so she only stays within her own 
like <laughs> her own geo fence, um, her own safe distance, you know, from from camp. And she never goes very far, do you? Oh, let's see. you are a good girl. You like coming out here, don't you? But when I was choosing a dog, like I said, I was specifically looking for a dog that I could bring, you know, out here. I didn't want a short coat dog or a single coat dog or, you know, a delicate dog. You know, I wanted a dog that one was intelligent and two was rough and tumble and three had a, had a double layer thick coat on them you know that can handle you know coming out here and they kind of, i'm sure there are other options that fit that criteria um but collie certainly certainly fits certainly fitted my my description of the perfect dog so she's 10 she'll be 10 years old come december i think she was born on december 26 and she'll be she'll be 10 but i mean you wouldn't really believe that she was 10 because she still acts like a puppy in many ways don't you you're like a big puppy you're like a big fluffy puffy puppy fluffy puffy puppy <laughs> see. it's half crossing my mind whether maybe in the next year or two you know before she's so old that she can't benefit from it to get an, <laughs> to get another one get another collie puppy we'll have to we'll have to see because apart from the time between bess when she died i think it was in November 2012 and when I got Lassie at the beginning of 2023 or was it 20 anyway whenever it was I haven't got me abacus with me at the moment um, and there was about a six month sorry and there was about a three month gap where there was no dog in in or around the house or, or even within the family because her parents have always had dogs as well. They don't now, but you know, in the family there's always been dogs and always cross and a crossover of dogs. So when one went, you there was always another one that you already had. You know, we always had two. Um, we always had two, and they were always different ages. So there was never a time when we didn't have a dog. But that time between Bess and, and Lassie, which was about three months. That was the only time where there'd be, you know, a gap. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, maybe at some point, maybe to get another one, a, a puppy, sooner rather than later. Uh, well, not in, any, not in any immediate rush just yet. Come up here then. Come here, come and test the strength of this chair. Come on then. Come on then. Up. Come on then. Off. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh. So yeah, so we'll have to we'll have to see. So the, the we, we can test the Lassie is now testing the you know we're, we're leaning back on the chair and you know the chair is <laughs> and the, the the grand chair is standing up to the weight of us and and leaning back as well and and we're not collapsed or anything anything like that so if you're a very good you're a very good chair tester lassie oh lassie <laughs> oh god oh lassie she's reasonably <laughs> hello over there She's, she's reasonably well trained, aren't you? She, she's, she's trained enough in the important things of, you know, don't chase things. Um, so sort of, come, come back kind of in your own time, but she's pretty good at returning at, at the recall. I must admit, it's, she's not too bad. She's not too bad at recall. She's not perfect, but she's not bad. And you will sit, won't you? If I say sit, then you will sit. 
you're not brilliant at down, but you will do a down. Should we show them what, what you are capable of doing? Do, do you think that's worth it? Do you think we're going to show ourselves up? Because let's face it, the ones who are interested in last are probably going to hang around and the rest of them are probably pissed off by now anyway. Do you want to do a bit of, bit of, um, a bit of agility or a bit of uh, something? You, you're falling off my legs slowly, Lassie. All right. Oh, hang on then. So let's do... Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Ooh. Okay, so if we put Lassie... So we're going to put Lassie kind of here, where I think Lassie, sit there. Lassie, sit. Good girl, stay. Lassie, stay. So we're going to do basic Columbo. Um, hello. We're going to do basic Columbo training here. Good girl. That, that's very good. That's very good, isn't it? Yeah, that's very good. All right, sit. All right, now stay there. Stay. Stay. No, sit. <laughs> when you say stay, Lassie, you're supposed to stay, not not move. Okay, come here. Good girl. And don't forget, with your commands, stay, Lassie, stay, stay, down. Very good. That's very good, isn't it? Oh, that's very, oh no, down quick, stick down, and then they won't, and then they won't notice you. You didn't do your down properly. Good girl, sit. Good girl, down. Good girl, come here. <laughs> oh, that's a good girl. That's a very good girl, isn't it? Yeah, they think you're expert now, look. All right, what else can we do? So we've done the recoil. No, come here, you can't do splashing yet. You know, we'll do something else. Okay, we did do this trick once before, but we'll do it again because they might not, they might not remember it. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this trick here now. It's like emu this, isn't it? Like emu, Lassie, come here. All right, hang on, wait there. Okay, okay. Right, ready? You ready for this? This magical trick. Right, ready? All right, go back a bit, go back a bit, go back, <laughs> go back a bit. All right, all right, right, now, left paw. No, that's left paw, there. You see, that's left paw. You notice that? Because that's the left side. Left paw, no, left paw. Right, and a right paw. Good girl. You see, you're a bit close to do it properly. Right paw, no, that's left paw. Right paw, that's a good girl. You see, very good, you see, very, very good. And now they're ready for the, the crescendo. <laughs> Right, both paws. Oh, they're both paws, see? Isn't that clever? Both paws. You want to do that again? Both paws. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And then the other one, we can do this as well. Touch. Good girl. Touch. No, touch. No, touch. <laughs> You're falling in the hole, aren't you? Touch. There, good girl. Very good girl. Yeah, you see, remember, we did it all a long time ago and we haven't done it ever since, have we? <laughs> all right all right so anyway there's probably a yow half an hour last see when you suppose everyone all the experts will be saying you're not supposed to do it for half an hour you're supposed to do a five ten minute premiere on on your dog <coughs> ah damn it oh that was dry quickly enough oh hang on Okay, then go on, then have a splash. Go on, then that's the deep end there. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> there, you see, this is your favourite bit, isn't it? Yeah. Go on, then have a bit more of a splash. You've done your hellos and you've done everything. Good girl. I don't. <laughs> Good girl. Let's see, have a drink. So, we're a bit camera shy now. She'll probably come down and do a lot more splashing when we're all not... Go on then, have a splash. Go on then. When we're all not looking. Good girl. Anyway. You're good company. The important thing is that she's good... Oh, shit. She's good company. She's well enough ooh, ah, behaved. Lassie, come here. So, come here. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, good girl. 
I probably should, I must admit, I probably should try and brush her more. Um, I'm not very good at brushing, at brushing her, but uh, I do, I do try to keep on top of it where I can. But, ooh, ah, ah. Anyway, so now you can you can you can look at me, or you can look at Lassie, Lassie down there. Oh God! Oh, oh Lassie! Oh no! Now she now she's now she's splashing. <laughs> She does like her splashing. Anyway, that's about half an hour. We'll, we'll edit this down a little bit for you. <laughs> but <laughs> those that want to watch are going to watch anyway. And those that don't want to watch, well, they would have turned off by now as well. Oh, that's a nice shake. Oh, good girl. Oh, As always, thank you very much. <laughs> Carry on camping indeed. As always, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Comment, subscribe, like, all the usual you know, gubbins and everything. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Thanks for watching.